Down below here is a video of a uh, of a uh, soldier um, whose mother um, was a strong follower of Christ. And pretty much long story short for this video is that she told him to carry a little bottle of anointing oil. And he wasn't really a believer at that time. But, you know, she tried her best to raise him right. And she would place, you know, uh... I'm sorry, he would, uh, you know, follow along with what she said and pray. You know, kind of half-heartedly, but still kind of like, well, you know, we're going out there, we're going to be shot at, you know. So he did. And, you know... And uh, pretty much throughout the video is that, uh... Uh, because, um... Well, it's not because of anointing oil, but more the sense for God to send a message. You know, every little thing that he touched with that anointing oil was protected from harm. And they got home safe and sound. And he was in a couple rough and scary things that, you know, he went through. And, you know, every little thing that he touched with the anointing oil was protected. Now, you know, throughout, you know, the Bible, you will see uh, various uh, things about, you know, them using oil or certain things to, you know, to mark. And uh, it's kind of cool to see that in the modern day, uh, in the modern day world, because it just goes to show that, you know, God is as, you know, you know, pertinent back then than he, uh, and, and he is now as well. And, uh. In this post, at Densville the Aster Wolf, every time he is about to enter a conflict, will often pray over every single one of his ships that is with him. It is a, it is a quick prayer, but it is a prayer that he says for every single one of his people. Great Creator, Lord and Savior of the universe, be with this ship and its crew, for we are about to go into battle. We do not know what the enemy has in store for us, but we know that you... No, and that you know how to take care of us. Be with us today and guide us and protect us. Most of all, great creator, bless us with wisdom and discernment. In the blessed holy blood of your son and your holy name, we pray this. Amen. He will go ahead and say this for his crew and for his fleet and for his empire. He will even sometimes pray during the battle, even when, even sometimes, uh, even when something comes up and there's not enough time. Much like the story of the soldier, he prays over his people constantly and consistently. When one of his best friends was in the reconstruction tape, uh, chamber in a induced coma due to suffering trauma on the battlefield, Edinsfo would pray over him when he woke up and would pray over him when he would go to bed. Through this, the Empire has never lost a battle ever since Edinsfo came into the picture and started doing this. Only the slightest of casualty, casualties has ever happened, and usually never ever results in a death. Usually. There has never been a death aboard the ship of the AABIHF fleet, even though the other fleets had suffered losses. Though there have been injuries and medical time, there have been only one, been only in the single digits of deaths over the time Adensvo has been in the picture, praying over his people. Unfortunately, his other fleets would suffer uh, fatalities and uh, damage, but they would still be fairly strong and, you know, only maybe like one ship every hundred battles would be lost, if not heavily damaged, because Adensfo makes sure that his people have the best. So, he knows that, you know, nobody is going to get out of this unscathed, but, you know, he's going to do whatever he can to, you know prepare as people, and, you know, um, and have the Lord cover the rest. And now, since he is considering making a move toward living with the Tars on their homeworld in the central part of the Empire, he will be able to pray for his entire Empire no matter what, every day, and be able to pray for the Great Creator's blessings over his people. One of the reasons why he gives out those special Astral Seven tokens is to spread that want to pray and to have faith with the Great Creator. On Storyline 3, Drogeriu and Sabin will often pray to the Great Creator together and pray for the Astral Seven to bless them and guide them and make them true. Just so you guys know, one of the uh, continuations throughout my stories is uh, the Astral, the Astral Seven. 
Timeline 1, Timeline 3, and Timeline 4 all have the Astral 7. It's kind of a fun little addition. Even though it's three different societies, you know, the Astral 7 are pretty much the same. And it's, it's, it's pretty cool because it's like a, you know, you know, it's a, it's a, one of those things that, uh, you know, completely different storylines, completely different, you know, characters, but, you know, it's, it's fun to have an Astro 7 being, you know, inside all three of those. So Ben will often pray over their meals and before they go to sleep. Even though Drogaryu, Drogaryu hasn't really prayed much due to her being a warrior queen, when Sabin came into the picture, she started to pray more and started to see his faith. It's very special, and because of this, her people have been blessed with more prosperity and a resurgence in their faith. Remember, uh, Drogaryu and her people are not humans, so they see, they see God in a different light. They see him in a different angle because they are not humans, but they still see him as the great creator. It's just that we don't really know exactly how their relationship um, is with him. So it's uh, it's interesting to, to kind of think about you know what a what another intelligent you know race would out there would uh, would see God as. Uh, so Ben, in my book, thrown into, into the maw of trials, will often pray multiple times a day, blessing his meals, blessing his excursions outside the town, and blessing others who need prayer. So Ben really cares for, about those who live in the town, and even prayed for Plamuk before ever even knowing about her. He prayed that whatever was out there that was killing people would stop, and would possibly either be defeated or be reconciled with, something that would prove very effective in the future. Then we have Shefe. Shefe will often pray over the meals that Wari or the Grinster will make for him. He will pray many times a day. These prayers also have helped him battle the psychosis and insanity that the that threatened to claim him because of the grinning corruption inside of his body, trying to spread like a cancer. When, fir when Wari first uh, made Shefe a meal and invited him over to his inner sanctum, Shefe asked if he could pray over the meal, and the delicious spread of Japanese food that was laid out on the table before them. <laughs> Wari being shocked that Shefe, a Christian above all things, would want to pray over the meal that the big scary wolf has made, I had made, allowed this, and, woo, that the scary wolf had made, uh, Wari allowed this, and not a curious of how this prayer would go. So, out of respect, Wari went silent, and waited for, for Shefe to start his prayer. Shefe closed his eyes, and folded his hands, and said a prayer to God. After the prayer, Wari was silent, and tilted his head curiously as he looked at Shefe. Uh, remember, uh, it, um, in my storyline, uh, um, it's a little bit different than the, than the original Little Laughter's uh, storyline. It's um, more in a sense, uh, Worry is supposed to be a principality, a creature of immense power and influence that has his own realm, kind of outside of the uh, normal human realm. And he has... Multiple thousands, if not more, Grinions at his disposal. He holds, he wields a lot of supernatural power, and he's usually known as malevolent, very malevolent. Um, at least in, 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 in my storyline, he's not not a demon. He's a principality. But uh, I don't know. It's just it's just interesting. In this storyline, he kind of uh, came into existence right after the. Uh, uh, right after um, the Garden of Eden was sealed off, I mean, like it's 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 a weird storyline. Remember, guys, this one is a uh, it's not exactly completely accurate. It's uh, um, it's 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 kind of a sci-fi fantasy story, kind of you know taking my own twists on on things to kind of make it interesting and fun. So, uh, you know, just take it with a grain of salt. This is kind of a fun little side story but uh yeah after the prayer Wari uh went silent and tilted his head curiously as he looked at, at um at Shefe. that was the first time anyone has said a prayer like that in front of me most of them are terrified or scream hateful things to me or pray for my destruction and are full of hate you are different you prayed with thankfulness and even prayed over me as well 
You prayed over the meal, and your words were happy and sincere. Hmm. I have to think much about this. After this, Wari's respect for Shefei、uh, grew substantially, and he wanted to work on helping Shefei battle the psychosis and corruption that was ravaging his body. After this, Wari would secretly shadow Shefei where, whenever he was in the regular universe or Wari's realm. He saw a side of Shefei that he never knew existed, and was surprisingly pleased about it. Despite being in constant discomfort and pain, and often suffering bouts of incredible rage and anger, Shefi would still give thanks to the Lord for all that he had been blessed with. He would notice Shefi almost fearlessly playing and interacting with the other Grinians, and especially with how close he was with the Grinster. He would see the most terrifying Grinian ever, that even he himself was scared of, holding Shefi close as they would have long talks of topics. Uh, ranging from you know, you know, insignificant things to very important things, the Grinster would snuggle Shefe close, and Shefe would enjoy the comforting, cool fur of his friend, as it would give him temporary relief from the pain and discomfort. These were widespread, ranging from silly topics to very serious conversations of Christianity and Shefe's faith and how it was going. When Wari would go back and invite Shefi over for some more meals with him in his sanctum, Shefi would would pray over the meals as well. And for the first time ever, these already nearly perfect meals just somehow just tasted all the more better and fuller. Wari's mind worked hard to figure out how this worked and grew more curious of Shefi. Not only that, because of Shefi's hopefully um hopeful and thankful and cheerful attitude, Wari wanted to be around him more and. Wanted to learn as well, so it's you know it's it's a fun you know fun little、uh, little aspects of you know different walks that, that、uh, the various characters in my stories have, you know.、Um, that's the thing. Wari is still you know evil and psychotic and malevolent, but he has a a、um, an affinity for Shefe because.、Uh, You know, Shefe was like the first person to actually show him some level of kindness, and it it、uh, it spoke out to the、uh, to the evil heart of、uh, Wari, and、uh, throughout, you know, Shefe knowing the Grinians and Wari and the Grinster,、uh, they all start to like him because you know he's a breath of fresh air, and、uh, they want to help him out, and、uh, you know there is a.、Uh, There's a really funny. Sorry, it's not funny, but like there's a、uh, a Bible verse that you know. I think it's like the I think it's a twenty third Psalm, where it says, "You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies," and literally, one of the most powerful beings to exist, that you know is pretty much hell bent on bringing humanity to destruction, outside of Satan, uh, actually likes Shefe. And you know invites him over for meals, and actually wants to take care of him. And because of this, Shefe can not on, I mean, not only、uh, has you know his food taken care of, but you know Wari and the Grin and and、uh, the Grinster were like, hey, just move in here. You know, you have more than enough room. You don't have to deal with crazy people, and、uh, yeah, you don't have to worry about money. So pretty much. All of Shefe's worldly, you know, problems were fixed. You know, he didn't have to worry about food because he always had food ready to go. He had, you know, a place to live、uh, in in Warrior's realm. He、uh, he has a gigantic battle base, battleship type thing, which is pretty much three Yamatos shoved together into this like amazing battle base, and then. You know,、uh, which is pretty much his mobile home away from his regular home. He can teleport to any part of, of the world using the powers that Wari has, you know, given him, and he can go around to all different parts of the world. And because you know the Grinster has given him nearly every language that has ever existed, Shefe can talk to people in their own language, and you know that actually has allowed him to minister. So it's kind of a fun little twist on things, and、uh, yeah, you know. 
So Chefe is friends with this powerful creature of, you know, malevolence and terror. And they're like, yeah, we like having him around. He's fun. So, I mean, you know, they don't show kindness or care to anyone else. But, you know, um, they, they, they do like having Chefe around. And that gives Chefe a ton of, you know, leverage and abilities that normal, uh, you know, people would not have. And in fact, you know, sometimes when, like, people are trying to play rough with him... You know the 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 Grinians step in and uh, play rough with the, with the other people because it's like oh you want to want to want to mess with our favorite human well you're gonna have a bad time and uh, in fact you know uh, yeah like they they will you know will like stop you know warlords from you know hurting people for you know having different beliefs they you know it's amazing to see the kind of the in in, in the story how. Different aspects of the Grinions can be used to help aid, you know, Chef A in, in his own little things that he's doing. And, uh, yeah, you know, it's just... And then, you know, like I said, in uh, in Timeline 1, you know, with uh, with the with the Astral Wolf, you know, that's a pretty, pretty uh, darn cool thing. And, um... Uh, let's see, uh... Yeah, the, the Astral Wolf is, uh... You know, he's been, been been the leader of the Astro Empire for over 500 years now. And, uh, yeah, you know, um, he has witnessed some of his closest friends unfortunately perish. Because they stepped in to sacrifice themselves to protect him. And, uh, you know, Chef, sorry, uh. A dense foe doesn't hold it against, you know, the great creator for, you know, his, his friend's passing, but the pain is still with him. So whenever he does pray over his people, he prays fervently and with passion because, you know, he knows what, it, what it's like to lose close friends and allies of his because, you know, they are fighting a war against a constantly evolving evil that tries to hurt, you know, the rest of the universe, you know, especially the Dark Empire, and, uh, yeah, so, you know, like I said, uh, during the, uh, earlier parts of, you know, Adenisfo being the Astral Wolf, not just the Unity Wolf, when his ship, you know, was, uh, under, uh, re uh recon reconstitution, where it had its armor disassembled and its shields off because a massive upgrade was going underway. The Dark Empire sent this crazy, weird weapon that was... It's, it's a trans-phase uh, warp weapon where its entire purpose is to jump one long distance and then slam itself into into a, a enemy target. And if that would have hit, you know, Adin's foe's main ship, the, uh, uh, whatever that super long, the A-A-B-I-I-H-F, uh, Unity, you know, that would have caused catastrophic damage to his ship, because that would have blown up from the inside. And even though Adin's foe's ships are built to pretty much take damage from anywhere and everywhere... That this weapon was made to pretty much destabilize a moon. Like, that's how much the Dark Empire wanted to hurt, you know, Adinsfo. So, you know, and then Adinsfo, one of Adinsfo's closest friends, piloted his ship, you know, in front of that weapon. Because he only had, like, a few seconds to react before that weapon went, you know, went uh, into hyperlight, you know. Well, not hyperlight, but like, you know, impact speed. And uh, the weapon detonated, completely vaporizing, uh, you know, Adinsfo's alpha, uh, Adinsfo's uh, allied ship. So, um, you know, Adinsfo has lost some really close people in the various wars and conflicts that, you know, the that the Empire has had to fight through. So, um, you know, he always prays over his people and his closest friends because, you know... Even though he himself is pretty much invulnerable, he, you know, he suffers because, you know, he sees his friends and, you know, people that he, care about, he cares about getting hurt. He sees, you know, 
uh, innocent people getting hurt. And, you know, uh, and, uh, yeah, so that's one of, one of the reasons why he prays so hard when he can, because he doesn't want to see, you know, his, his, his people, you know, die. He doesn't want to see his people get hurt. And, uh, you know, he's constantly on the front lines and he is the reason why the empire has stayed together, him and, you know, praying to the great creator. And the great creator through this has blessed him with, you know, phenomenal victories, like flawless victories, pretty much all the time. And, uh, yeah, you know, Adin's foe, you know, when he goes to live on the tar planet, he's not, not going to be on the front lines constantly. So that's one of the reasons why he's trying to prepare his people. So that way, when he finally kind of sets up, you know, a para permanent, you know, semi permanent base on, uh, on the tar planet, you know, uh, he's going to have, you know, really cool trans phase, uh, warp gates that will be ready. Uh, and, uh, the, the tar planet is in the center of the empire. So that way it is the most protected planet of all. And on top of that, the astrolic moon will also be in the center of the empire orbiting the, uh, the tar planet. And this will allow a dense vote if, if a substantial enough enemy is causing the Empire too much trouble and too many people are starting to perish trying to hold back the enemy, a dense vote will be able to uh, scramble his fleet and get to that area within a couple minutes because of the trans phase uh, warp gates, which will um, pretty much cause uh, a straight line for a dense vote to pretty much instantaneously get to that location and fight off the enemy. But, uh, yeah, and then, you know, like I said, uh, with uh, Jugeryu, you know, her people for, you know, thousands of years have known about the Great Creator and the Astral Seven. And remember, the Astral Seven are supposed to be similar to the uh, Seven Spirit Ministry, which is, you know, God has seven spirits. Or, you know, like seven spirits under his uh, under his reign that, you know, are supposed to, you know, be things that can, you know, influence people. So, like, you know, if you pray for wisdom, the spirit of wisdom will, uh, will be with you. <laughs> Ooh. Sorry, guys, I am dealing with a runny nose lately. No coughing, just a really annoying runny nose. <laughs> But don't worry, uh, I took Mucinex DM, which takes care of, you know, stuff like that, so it makes it so that way I can still breathe. I have a little bit of allergy medicine to take care of the antihistamine, and then uh, I took some Flonase, because that will help with the uh, angry uh, nose, and it helped me to continue to breathe, so that way I don't wake up in a panic because I can't breathe through my nose. But yeah, so pretty much the story of Drugaryu is that, you know, she was supposed to, she's, she's technically a uh, stalled out embryo that was put in stasis like 2,000, 3,000 years ago. And, you know, like within, within the last hundred years, she, uh, uh, her, uh, ancient, you know, technological uh stasis pod which was set for a random time well technically well it technically was supposed to be set uh to be influenced by the great creator and in this story uh you know they aren't really sure but you know through the it's but it's through the legends that the great creator unlocked the uh you know arming cycle of the uh of the uh, stasis pod, which made Drugaryu, who kept, who uh, was, you know, given all the uh, knowledge and wisdom of the, uh, of the Astral Seven, and, you know, supernatural abilities would allow her to lead her people. And, you know, the, the pod itself had supernatural capabilities, allowing Drugaryu to passively, 
you know, absorb, you know, knowledge and information as the astrals evolved in that, in that storyline. And, uh, that allowed her to kind of jumpstart a very quick and easy uh, startup. So that way she was able to already get things into gear. And it was quite, you know, it's quite, you know, really cool just to see, you know, just how evolved and developed, you know, Drugario is. And, you know, uh, you know, she was supposed to be, be the first stage of astrolic re reawakening and uh, reconstitution. Because uh, her people were starting to stagnate. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's actually kind of cool. And then, you know, in, in my book on Timeline on timeline 4 with uh, Plamuk, she was supposed to be known as kind of a teacher and an overseer. She was kind of supposed to be uh, the definition of astrolic beauty. Kind of like, you know, kind of like a, uh, a symbol to say, wow, look at this creature that God created. It's truly amazing what, what, you know, he can do. But unfortunately, because, you know, the corruption of, you know, of the curse and sin, you know, that turned into pride. And, you know, Drugaryu, sorry, not Drugaryu, uh, Plamuk originally did not have pride. She was just, you know, happy to be, to be pretty. And it just made her, made her happy to be, you know, seen as pretty and beautiful. But, you know, over time, you know, that started to, to become corrupted. And as the world grew more evil and broken, you know, that started to affect, you know, affect her. So she would slowly kind of, you know, hide away more and more, not wanting to be a part of that. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of a cool story. But, uh, yeah, you know, it's just, uh, it, it's kind of fun just seeing how all the, uh, how all the different walks of my characters, you know, interact with the different characters in the stories and you know some of these characters are not good people but they still care about the main character so they in turn can be useful and you know even though you know some of them are still wicked and evil you know they still you know are able to be helpful like for instance warrior and the grinster like they are malicious like beyond malicious they'll find ways to really mess with you and just pretty much drive you into insanity if they get the chance. But for for uh, for Chef A, they're just like, hey, buddy, what's up? Need any help? And Chef is like, and, you know, there's been times where Chef is like, hey, uh, yeah, I, mean, I was, you know, was in this country. And, you know, they don't have the people to, you know, uh, to, uh, to, 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 to build this little church or build this little hospital. And, you know, they ask me for help. Can you guys help? And, you know, they don't like to help people, but they like to help Chef A. So, you know, so Chef A, can I call in, you know, call in occasional favors? And, you know, suddenly a little swarm of Grinions, both big and small, would just come up and it's like, all right, what do we do? And you have all, all these adorable, fuzzy, scary, red furred fluff balls just picking up, you know, tools and stuff and assembling a hospital or a church, you know. And Chef A's like, yay, this is fun. So it's just kind of, you know, kind of fun throughout the different, you know, stories, you know, how each, you know, character has different, you know, different stuff. So, yeah, that, you know, but uh, yeah, you know, overall, you know, just kind of the uh, the point of this uh, was supposed to be kind of a, uh, you know, different walks in my characters and different stories and different, you know, uh, scenarios affects things in different ways and uh it's uh it's fun being able to kind of and incorporate that into my stories because in all honesty i can't really imagine my characters without a greater following you know a greater purpose so even even if it's more passive like you know a dense foe, uh more being a warlike and war-minded or more in-depth and integrated like you know chef a you know, they all still have, you know, uh, that relationship with the great creator. And, uh, yeah, it's just, you know, it's, it's kind of fun because, uh, you know, throughout this time, you know, a dense foe started to grow more into that, you know, as, you know, things started to settle down. And, uh, yeah, it's just, you know, it, it's fun. It's, it's kind of, you know, interesting to see. You know where I can where where these stories can be taken without breaching certain you know certain guidelines and boundaries. 
But uh, yeah, yeah, you know, just uh, you know, tell me what what you guys think about this. Like I said, these are stories; they aren't you know exactly supposed to be accurate. But I try to keep them at least somewhat accurate, so they don't turn into something that they shouldn't. But uh, yeah, you know, just let me know, let me know what what you guys think. You know, it's it's fun being being able to make stories. So yeah, it's fun. Anyway, see you guys on on the uh, on the next one.